So I hate to say this, but you really have to look out where you get your news from and also where you get your advice from. You know, your 20s is such a special time because it lasts about 10 years and in a decade, so much can change. But you always hear these two extremes, people that basically had a lousy time in their 20s where they basically wasted all their money and they say, hey, use your 20s to put your head down and just work like crazy and just do something. And then people that say, hey, I did that, but you should use your 20s to basically have some fun, discover new things and just figure things out, okay? Both extremes tend to be very stupid. What you should try to do is just get a fair balance, okay? So in this video right here, I'm gonna tell you about seven things you should be trying to buy and replace when you are in your 20s. And again, your 20s are special. I'm currently in my 20s. I'm almost done with them, which is sad to say, but the idea is I'm currently in my 20s and I'm not here just basically working all the time or trying to be like a discovery channel. I'm just trying to have a good balance where I make good decisions that will pay off eventually in the future also. It's all about having a balanced lifestyle. So now, as always guys, like this video and top out also subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. Now, the very first thing you wanna buy in your 20s is basically buy Buy good liabilities until you figure out you don't really need any liabilities. And here's what I mean, okay guys? So when you think about a liability, it's something that takes money out of your pocket. Something that goes down in value usually, but there are good ones out there that don't actually add any money whatsoever, but they don't really go that down in value relative to other things. So for example, instead of buying an Apple Watch, buy a Rolex. Instead of buying, for example, a fake gold chain, buy a real one. And you might say, Tommy, why are you telling people to buy these things? The answer is because I was in my 20s. And I know when you're in your 20s, there are things you wanna buy that you absolutely do not need. But it's better to buy things you don't need that retain their value. So when you figure out you don't need them, you go ahead and basically sell them for a fair price. For example, I have this gold chain. If I wanna sell this thing, I get exactly my money back. That's pretty good. The only reason I have, for example, an Apple Watch is basically I'm a runner. I run every day. I can't do that with a Rolex. And I would not want a Rolex. There's so much attention. I hate things like that, okay? But overall, what I mean is, buy things that you don't need that retain value. So once you figure out you don't need them, you can always just basically go ahead and sell them for your money back. Because one thing I learned is I can tell you, you don't need this, but you will still try to buy it. Because there's something that happens until you figure it out for yourself, usually it's very hard to take advice. So by the way, I only have this because this was actually a gift from my uncle. I, I didn't really go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna go today and buy me a gold chain for absolutely no reason. It's actually a gift and that's why I have it. But as far as liabilities and things like that, I don't have them, but I did spend like my 17 to 19 years old just collecting a bunch of trash that went down in value and I'd rather you do the opposite, collect some trash that retains value so when you sell it, you get your money back. That's the idea. Now, number two, guys, is you want to buy expenses replacement. For example, okay, a lot of folks, they like drinking coffee. They like eating out. And those are things that basically they're ongoing expenses forever. If you listen to Starbucks and your little fancy name or whatever and get in your little fancy cup, you'll be going there every single day and those expenses basically add up. If you listen, for example, to get your meals from DoorDash or whatever, you will be buying things all the time. But in reality, if you buy, for example, a good, decent coffee maker, for like 30 bucks or even a hundred dollars okay if you buy for example a good crock pot and a good rice cooker or pressure whatever you actually want to do just to make cooking a lot more simple for lazy folks out there like me the answer is this stuff all it can cost you some money when you first buy it like 30 bucks for a crock pot 30 bucks for a coffee maker or even if you want to be fancy 200 dollars for both the answer is it will still save you a ton of money every single year so my advice is look at your expenses and see what things can you basically replace just by spending one time money like a crock pot or like a coffee machine maker and it's not like you can't ever drink coffee out again or eat out every now and then the answer is that's fine just don't make it a habit like that you want to make it for you all right now number three guys is going to be this is gonna sound strange coming from me 
but it's called quality clothing. Um, that's something I did not do for a very long time. I did not buy quality clothes, but I just bought a bunch of like different little t-shirts here and there, just like regular stuff. And when I figured out that over the years, these shirts would just wear out a lot faster. These clothes would just basically break and whenever they would break or tear or whatever, I would have to go ahead and replace them. So some of my favorite brands right now, they're gonna be, for example, Gap, Banana Republic, Sperry, Bonobos, and also a few others. But I'm not buying, for example, Gucci. I'm not buying, for example, Balenciaga because you don't wanna confuse, for example, quality with brand. And you don't want to confuse retail with value in the sense that, when I buy these clothes, usually I buy them, for example, at Burlington, at Marshalls, at Outlets. Some of these things I even buy use every now and then. But the answer is when you buy quality things, you can buy quality things at a discount by going to an outlet. My shirts, which not this one, but a lot of my Banana Republic shirts, which basically retail for like $34, I buy them for like $12 at an outlet. And they last me a very long time. A lot of my jeans that go for like $70, $80, I buy them from an outlet at Gap and they cost me like $35 and they last me years. My And also my suits. So my point is, you wanna buy things that are quality because a lot of the times they will last you a lot longer. And there's just saying that when you buy cheap clothes, they'll tend to wear you. Same thing with cheap shoes or whatever, okay? I got some very cheap shoes which I love for like $30, $20, was it $12? Very cheap, okay? And they're like, they're like done, okay? They're like tearing everywhere, but you buy some quality shoes and they last like Vans and they last so long. And I got my Vans from outlets and they go like for like $35, $40 and they last me like years. And that's what you wanna look for. Buy quality things, not cheap things. And don't buy quality things. If you can't afford them just yet, try to find them for less, all right? Don't confuse what I'm saying here because people tend to do this stuff and I don't like it. People tend to say, hey, quality stuff, I'm gonna spend a bunch of money on this stuff. No, like you find these things for a good price that will go are gonna last you for a long time. If you can't afford them right now, go to Walmart. Buy some stuff, work hard. When you can afford some stuff, you buy quality things. That's the idea. Be reasonable and use common sense. Now, number four is buy a good phone. Um, my last phone was an iPhone XS. This right here is an iPhone 14. And my iPhone XS, I bought it when the iPhone basically kind of came out and I bought it for, no, when the iPhone 11 it came out, I bought that one. I paid $200 for that phone, no, $100, $150. I replaced something on it. I bought it for a very cheap price, okay? It was like years ago. And I basically used that phone for like four or five years. The battery started to give out, replaced the battery, gave me even more life with it. And then when I was kind of like done with it, got very slow, I sold it for a good price. And then I bought this phone brand new. And now I can basically use this phone for like another four or five years. My point is, Things you're gonna be using all the time, you usually wanna buy them. Things like this, buy them used. This was a gift to myself for being debt free. I would never buy a phone like this, like retail. What I would have done was basically buy like the 12 or the 13 or whatever for like 30, 40% less and use that phone for like three, four, five more years. But you tend to wanna buy quality things. I know people that every single year, they replace their phones because either the phones suck or they basically just wanna have the, ne the next thing. It never ends. Use this stuff for their, its life. And then you can just basically buy something else once you sell it and you can get a very good deal. That's the idea. Now, number five, guys, is gonna be buy a good car. And again, especially with guys here, a good car does not mean brand. It does not mean what people think about you. A good car means reliability and safety. That's what it tends to be. And also, if it can save you money on gas, even better. It does not mean a Tesla. It does not mean some fancy Mercedes or BMW or a Lexus. It means, for example, usually right now in today's day and age, Toyota, Honda, and also, for example, um, Mazda. These are very good cars. And it does not mean buying the newest car with the newest technology. No, like cars have been doing the same thing since the Model T. They go from point A to point B. That's, that's what cars do, okay? So you buy a 10-year-old car, a 12-year-old car, my 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 sweet spots around like seven to five years or so because appreciation hits has hit very hard but you buy a car that can go like 200 300k miles without any issues and you get a few years out of it you buy a car that has a hundred thousand miles on it that goes for 300 000 miles that's not the 10 years with that car my point is things that you need like a car usually depending on where you live 
buy a good car that's reliable, that's safe, saves you money on gas, and you buy that car and you wear it down to the wheels until you're actually able to buy the car you want, like the fancy thing, but you can pay cash for it. That's the point. And whenever you do it this way, you can buy a car that used to be 30 grand and buy it for like, like five grand or even like less, depending on how old it actually is. But you get a lot of life out of it. That's the point. Don't fall for the trickery and the whole like, this is a cool car. All cars, they become like just like like trash okay so get a good car that's the idea now number six guys is gonna be buy a good skill um and a good skill does not mean for example titles it does not mean for example time either what i mean is people think that if you're a doctor you are super rich if you're a lawyer super rich if you spend eight ten years studying and education super rich the answer is that's not always true you can become basically like an hvac technician that fixes air conditioning and stuff like that in nine to twelve months you can become a real estate agent and like same time you can become for there are a multitude of different certificates and degrees or whatever that take very little time for you to start earning fifty thousand sixty thousand eighty thousand dollars okay and that makes a big difference because you start off without any debt you start off like four five six years early than the average person with a bunch of money and it's just a lot faster more convenient a lot more economical so think about a skill you can get that you like you're good at and it's actually going to make you money my whole thing was i'm going to get a bachelor's in accounting then i'm going to get my master's then i might get for example maybe like another master's in finance and i'm going to be this guy with all these titles and what would have happened was i would have been in a lot of student loan debt that's what I, well, that's what would happen okay so you want to consider these things very carefully and don't just assume that if you get for example a certificate that you're not someone that it doesn't matter okay what you really want is to have a good income to do a job you actually enjoy and to make a good amount of money actually doing it. And if you can do that for less money in less time, you're smarter off for it. Imagine if you graduated, I graduated at 17 and I would have became, for example, an HVAC technician. And I would have done it like, for example, in 12 months. So now I'm 18 years old. I'm earning $50,000 a year. By the time some lawyer graduates in 50 years, in like eight years or whatever, I've been earning $50,000 for about let's say fifty thousand dollars for eight years or whatever that's four hundred thousand dollars i basically have and now they're gonna earn for example 200k their first year 200k their, like the next year potentially right potentially but they also have a bunch of student loan debt and stuff like that and with this money you can basically buy a home pay it off like there it's just you want to use math okay and make sure things actually make sense and use common sense because getting the most education the fanciest titles out there they don't always equal um, more happiness and they don't always equal more money when you actually run the numbers okay now number seven guys is you want to invest in equity and what i mean by that is whether it's for example into stocks into real estate you want to put your money into things that are actually going to produce whether it's a business or whatever it is okay and that's the overall idea but my big advice when it comes to that is don't ever invest into something you don't understand fully and if you follow that simple rule and you really understand something that's in line with your goals because sometimes you can understand something but it doesn't mean you should invest into it i understand how the jewelry business works but it doesn't mean i want to get into the jewelry business okay i can understand how picking stocks works but i don't want to be doing that for eight hours out of my day just reading financial statements okay so it's like you want to find something you really understand and it does not mean you will understand it inherently, like meaning you just understand it. It means you it's gonna take work to understand these things, but that's in line with your goals, okay? What your financial goals actually are. My goals are very simple. I wanna have financial independence. And to me, that does not look like me making a hundred million dollars a month. It looks like, for example, me making more money than I spend every single year and having stability. That's what I care about the most. And what I love to do is, teach and help people when it comes to that stuff. So it's like, this is what I do based on what my goals are. That's the idea. So by the way, life is like that, right? You gotta kind of discover what you like, what you're good at, and that takes time, but it's definitely worth it just basically just going along life, root -do and everything, okay? So that is it for this video, guys. I hope this actually helps you. And if you're in your 20s and you take this advice, because the, the goal thing is, okay, the whole thing is, in, in reality, you're gonna make mistakes. It's like, you, you can't, you cannot make mistakes. It's just normal. Even when you read so many books as I did, I still made mistakes with certain things, okay? Some mistakes, you can't even help them. It's just going to happen. But the more you know, the less mistakes you're going to make and the less costly mistakes you make, the better it is. Like, if I were to watch this video 
I probably would have had like a chain instead of like 400 sneakers, like 200 sneakers, like what was it? Like 23 pairs of sneakers, okay? Let me not exaggerate. I had 23 pairs of Jordans. By the time I sold it, I sold it for a massive loss. If I would have bought a little fancy watch, a little fancy chain, I could have sold those things for what I bought them for, okay? If I would have like, like, like gone into something that I could have gone into a lot faster, who knows, right? Because I like where I am now and that was a part of my journey. But the point is, okay, you don't have to go through a lot of mistakes to then say, that's a part of my journey, all right? It's very lousy, lazy way of talking. But that is it, guys, for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, shout out to God. God is awesome. And as always, guys, like this video on top of Also, subscribe. Hit the bell to so get notified. On top of comment down below, made it. So I know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Up here is another video. And I will make a video on seven things not to buy in your 20s. So subscribe to keep up to date with that video when it comes out. And over here is my face. Subscribe. And as always, long-term team, officially.